Scope. And there's Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Prof. Dave Taylor here. Uh, we're going to continue with our series. Let's start with a word of prayer, and then we'll jump right in. Thank you, Lord, for this night, oh God. We just want to acknowledge you in all things, oh God. I just want to bow down, humble myself before you, oh Lord, and acknowledge that you are God and God alone, and this is your word and your kingdom and your body and your saints, and it's about you. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So I ask, O oh God, I surrender myself to your will, O oh God. I thank you for the privilege of being a part of your kingdom. I thank you for the privilege of being used by you, O oh God, prophetically and uh, through teaching. So I surrender myself to you, Lord. I surrender myself to the Holy Ghost, my mind, my brain, my tongue, my lips, my hands, my gestures, my thoughts, everything. I surrender to the filling of the Holy Ghost, O oh God, so that you can speak through me. So that what you want to be said will be said, O oh God, for your glory, and for the edification of your body, O oh God, and to challenge the unbelievers, O oh God, and to continue to do damage to the kingdom of darkness. So I just thank you for it. So be in the midst of everything that's said and done tonight, O oh God, to the honor and glory of your name. And it's in Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Now. What we're talking about, now remember this is second Thursday night, and when I come on on second Thursday night, I'm doing my series called No More Genies. I strongly, 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 strongly encourage you to watch the No More Genies series from the beginning, okay? No More Genies is about getting rid of our, oh, i got to position that right, I'm sorry, Periscope. Uh, uh, no More Genies is about getting rid of our genie concept of God and developing a real faith-based concept of God based on what the scripture says. So instead of traditions, instead of denominationalism, instead of uh, traditions of man, instead of religion, instead of form and fashion, instead of that stuff that, you know, mom and them did ever since you were little, instead of all that, we want to see what the scripture actually says about everything. And we want to get rid of our genie concept of God. We want to get rid of a magic concept of God. We want to get rid of anything that says we don't have responsibility. We want to get rid of all that. We want to look at what the word actually says. So that's what No More Genies is about. No More Genies is about getting rid of the genie concept of God that is so pervasive. So I strongly, strongly encourage you to watch the No More Genies series from the beginning. Watch the very first video. This is actually video number 13. So watch the series from the beginning. It's on my Facebook page, it's on my Periscope, and it's on YouTube. And it's in YouTube, it's there right in its own uh, little playlist, okay? But I strongly suggest that you watch the No More Genie series from the beginning. Because there's a lot of information I put out there, a lot of explanation and stuff that I went through to let you know, you know, what's really going on with it. Because, again, it's a deep dive into the Word of God to try to get the right idea, the right idea about God and the right idea about what he said and the right idea of what we're supposed to be doing instead of so much denominationalism and so much religion and so much traditions of men which don't have any power. And by the way, that's why one of the reasons why so many churches are drying up. I'm telling you, I've heard from people all over and I've heard from people of every age group that it seems like churches are just drying up, that people just aren't coming anymore, that people aren't interested, and a lot of churches are just dying on the vine. There's many reasons for that, and some of them I know why. And one of the reasons is because religion has run out. Religion has run its course. We've hit a point, uh, now I'm broadcasting from America, by the way, so I'm just talking about America, because I know some of y'all watching me from all different points in the world. But we've hit a point in America for quite some time now to where religion can't take us any further. Because religion has no power. It's just form and fashion. And people have hit that wall and now they don't know what to do. Because they never actually had a relationship with God. They never actually knew how to hear from the Lord. They have never actually understood God as a person. All they knew was the traditions and the customs and the culture of their church or their denomination. And that is not a relationship with God. Because God is a person, not a set of rules. One more time. 
God is a person, not a set of rules. So I'm going to say this part. You hear me say it all the time, but, you know, I repeat myself a lot for the new people that are tuning in or people that have maybe never heard some of what I'm talking about. There are three levels of word, and you have to have a relationship with all three levels of word. You have to have a relationship with the Bible. That's the written word of God, also called the Logos, the word, okay? The Bible, that's the written word of God. You have to have some type of mastery of the scriptures. But number two, you have to have a relationship with Jesus himself as a person. Jesus is the living word of God. Jesus is God in action. Jesus is the word of God in action. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. Okay, he's the living word. Everything God is, you can see it in Jesus. Everything the Bible represents, you can see it in Jesus. He's the word made flesh. He's the word in action. Number two, but number three, you also have to have a relationship with the rhema word of God, the fresh breathed word of God, what God is saying right now and what God is saying to your situation. And that normally comes through the prophetic because helicopters, fast food, which house should I buy and what college should I go to is not in the Bible. One more time. Helicopters aren't in the Bible. Fast food restaurants aren't in the Bible. Which college should I go to is not in the Bible. Which house should I buy is not in the Bible. The Holy Ghost has to tell you that in your life right now in real time on the spot. What is God breathing out? What is he saying? That's the rhema word. Okay? Now, those of you that have any type of church background, often you will find people that kind of hang their hat in one of those. But you actually need a relationship with all three. So some people would say it's all about knowing the Lord. That's true. But you can't know the Lord without knowing the Word. And some people will say it's all about knowing the Word. That's true. But the devil quoted Scripture. Okay, the devil knows the Bible. It's more than just quoting Scripture. It's knowing the God of the Bible. Okay, and the things that you need to know in your life in real time have to do with letting the Lord be the Lord of your life, getting a rhema word from God. What is God saying in this season? What is it that God wants you to be doing during this time? All that different kind of stuff. Those are rhema words. See what I mean? There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes 3 that says there's a time and a purpose to every season under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die. Time to build, a time to tear down, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. That's in Ecclesiastes. But how are you going to know when those times are in your life? That's the rhema word where God says, in this season, I want you to do this. In this season, I want you to do that. I want you to save some money now because hard times are coming in the fall. I want you to sow some money now because harvest is coming whenever like that. That's rhema word. You see what I mean? That's fresh breathe, and that normally comes through the prophetic. You have to have all three in your life. You've got to have the Bible, the written word. You've got to have a relationship with Jesus, the living word. And you've got to have a relationship with the rhema word, the fresh breathed word of God that normally comes through the prophetic. And if you try to hang your hat in just one of those, you're not going to be fully rounded as a Christian because you can't know the Lord without knowing the scriptures. Okay? And the way that you recognize the prophetic word of God is you spend time with him. You spend time in his presence. You get to know his voice. You get to know his spirit. You get to know the way God does things. And you'll know him when you hear him because the Lord said, my sheep know my voice. He did not say, my lambs know my voice. So when you're new to the kingdom, it's easy to get confused, which is why a whole lot of Christians get led away into crazy things because you don't quite yet know that's Jesus talking to you. You've got to learn that. You see that? So you need all three. Written word, the Bible, living word, Jesus to Christ, rhema word that comes through the prophetic. Okay? So that's not what I'm teaching on tonight, but I just wanted to do that, to do that refresher. Okay? And again, strongly, strongly encourage you to watch the No More Genie series from the beginning. Okay. So let's talk about our topic tonight. Now, if you remember, you can go back and watch last week's video if you remember, I started a new series called We Do It Wrong. And I laid the foundation for that last week. I laid the foundation for the, what Jesus actually preached versus what we preach. We preach, get saved, get saved, born again, born again, miss hell, miss hell, go to church, go to church, go to heaven when you die. That's not what the Lord preached. <laughs> the Lord preached the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. The kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like that. That's what Jesus preached, okay? And so where I ended off last time was I said, 
I got down to some of the parables and I said, we're going to deep dive into some of the parables because we need to know how the kingdom of God actually operates. And once you see what Jesus actually said, which you may or may not have ever heard in your religious background, then all of a sudden a lot of things are going to be more clear to you. Once again, we examine what the Lord actually taught as opposed to what we preach and teach, which is get saved, get saved, born again, going to, born again, miss hell, miss hell, go to church, go to church, go to heaven when you die. And the Lord never once said, come to synagogue on Saturday and I will hook you up. The Lord never said that. <laughs> the Lord always used personal pronouns. I, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, I'm the, the bread of life come down from heaven. No man comes to the Father but by me. So the Lord said he was the bridge. So since the Lord is the bridge between God and man, and since the Lord is the bridge between heaven and earth, then we want to know what he taught so we can see how his kingdom works so we can move out of error into truth, okay? So tonight we're going to look at two parables uh, that he taught about the kingdom, both in Matthew. Now also remember last week I explained to you the difference between when you say the kingdom of God in the Bible and the kingdom of heaven and why that's there, they're the same thing. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all addressing different audiences. So go back and watch last week's video where I explained that. So tonight we're going to look at the parable of the sower in Matthew 13, and we're going to look at the parable of the wheat and the tares also in Matthew 13. And we're going to deep dive into what the Lord actually says. So turn to Matthew chapter 13 in your Bibles. Now remember, Matthew is the first book in what we call the New Testament. Let me just throw in that everything that Jesus did, he did under the Old Covenant of the Old Testament. The New Testament does not start until Jesus dies. It's a testament. It doesn't start until the death of the testator. So everything that Jesus did, he actually did under the Mosaic Law and the Old Covenant. The New Testament does not start until Jesus dies. So they call Matthew, Mark, Luke, John the Gospels, and then there's the Acts. But it's when Jesus died that the veil in the temple was rent, okay, signifying that there was no more separation between God and man, that we could be rejoined because Jesus took the punishment in his flesh. That's when the New Testament actually started, when Jesus shed his blood. He wrote the New Testament and sealed it in his blood. That's when the New Testament started, when Jesus died, okay? All right, Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to start with, I'm going to skip around. I'm not going to read everything through, okay? Okay, so we're going to start at verse 3, Matthew chapter 13, verse 3. And he spake many things unto them, and to them is the crowd that was listening to him talk. He spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Uh, I'm reading out of the King James Version, by the way. And some fell among thorns, verse 7, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell onto good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. He uh, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Whoa, that's a lot to unpack. So we're going to skip down to uh, verse 18. And the Lord says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. So in other words, the Lord was describing to them, he's going to explain to them what he just talked about. Uh, verse 19, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he no root in himself, but doeth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. 
But he that receives seed into the ground into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Wow, that's deep. There's so much to unpack. Okay? So we're going to do a deep dive. Okay? So let's look at what Jesus actually said. He said, a sower went forth to sow. That sower is him. When the Lord says a sower went forth to sow, he's talking about him. So right off the bat, himself. So right off the bat, the Lord is telling you that he's the one that sows the word. Remember, he's the living word, and he sows the word. He sows scriptures, he sows the rhema word, he sows himself. But when the Lord is talking about the sower, there a sower went forth to sow, he's talking about himself. That's Jesus identifying himself. And then he says that uh, when he sowed some of the seeds, some of the seeds, so that tells us that the word of God is going to come to you in seed form. Now, what do we know about seeds? We know that seeds are full of potential. We know that seeds have actually great life inside of them because we know that great trees come from small acorns and we know that great plants come from tiny little seeds. So we know that seeds come already pre-programmed with great life inside of them, but seeds have to be planted. Physical seeds have to be planted in the earth and they have to be watered and nurtured and you have to give it time and you got to put it in some good dirt, some good ground and you got to fertilize it and all that and then it can grow up and then you got to you know, protect it from the bugs, pesticides, whatever. But we know that seeds come packed with potential but they have to be planted in some good soil or else they're never going to realize their potential. Now, right there, that's what you need to understand about the Word of God that it doesn't matter how much the Lord sows into you if that seed is not planted in the good ground. Okay? That seed has got to be planted into good ground. If that seed isn't planted in the good ground, it's not going to do you any good. That's where a lot of people get confused in their relationship with God because they think that it's all up to God. <laughs> it's not all up to God. Okay, and the Lord talks about our responsibility in these verses. I'm going to continue with that in a minute. But the other thing I want you to see is that the Lord said that he sows seeds. Do you know what that means? That means that God does not give you a finished product. God gives you seed. Okay, right there. The Lord did not say that he sows trees. <laughs> he did not say that he, he sows fruit. He did not say that he sows a finished product. What the Lord sows is good ground. Okay? So remember I told you, this is no more genies, no more genie concept of God. There's a whole lot of people that are expecting God to just drop everything on you at once or give you a finished product or give you something that's already full and completed and done. And that's not what the Lord said. He said he sows seeds. So God is going to give you the seed of his word that is action-packed, that is life Packed, that is packed with potential. But something has to happen to those seeds. Those seeds have to be planted. And so, so let's continue. So we're still up in verse 4, Matthew 13, 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Okay, now let's see what that means. Now the translation or the explanation of that is found in verse 19, Matthew 13, 19, where the Lord says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Okay, what did Jesus just say? He just said, when you hear the word of the kingdom, but you don't understand it. You know what that means? That means you have to apply yourself. That means you have to, as, as many people in my church say, you have to press in. In other words, if God puts something out there you don't understand, you got to spend some time with it. you got to spend some time in the Bible. you got to look up the Hebrew and the Greek. you got to pray. you got to ask the Lord for understanding. you got to talk to other people that are more seasoned in the Word, more people that are experienced in the Word, people that have been in the kingdom longer that are more mature saints. You have to make an effort to understand it. 
But if you hear the Lord say something to you, or you hear something preached, or you hear some words sown, and you don't understand it, the, the Lord says the devil, then come at the wicked one, it's talking about the devil, is going to come and catch that word out of that which is sown in your heart. In other words, it had a chance to take root in your heart, and the devil comes snatch it out because you didn't understand it. You didn't apply it. You didn't make any effort to let that word take root in your heart. And the Lord said, that is he which receives seed by the wayside. You know what that looks like in practical terms? When pastor preaches a sermon about forgiveness and before your behind hits the car seat, you arguing with your spouse. Just heard all that good word about forgiveness and you just harden your heart. You said, yeah, 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 but I'm mad at my wife and I'm going to be mad at her. I'm going to stay mad. You said, yeah, 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 I'm mad at my husband and I'm going to stay mad. Okay? You didn't understand that word. You didn't receive the word about forgiveness. It didn't take root in your heart. And the devil came and snatched that word out of your heart before you got in the car good. You see what I mean? That happens all the time. That's why I'm trying to emphasize to you that you have some responsibility in this God thing. It's not all up to God. He said it's his job to sow the seed and he's going to sow good seed. He's going to sow the seed of his word. He's going to sow the seed of his kingdom and it has great potential but it must be planted in a heart that's making an effort to understand it. And if you don't make any effort, if you don't apply yourself to the word of God, the devil going to come snatch that word out your heart. Let me give you another practical, practical example of exactly what I'm talking about. I knew someone many, many years ago who lost their short, their son was sick. Their son was sick, and he could have been sick unto death. And I tried to talk to this person about divine healing, and I told this person, according to the scripture, that his son could be healed and that we could be healed. Healing is a part of our inheritance in Jesus Christ. And I know that person because I have been divinely healed, and also because I laid hand on my son, and God healed him. So I know both from scripture and practical experience that God will heal you divinely. Okay? So I shared my testimony and I shared that knowledge that you just heard me say with this person and they completely rejected it. They completely was like, no, no, you know, it was like, you know, if that's what you believe, you go on with that. But it's like they didn't want to hear it. And long story short, their son ended up dying. Okay, because they would not receive. Maybe they had had some bad experiences or maybe they had had some bad teaching or I don't know what happened. All I know is they didn't receive anything I was trying to say. And they hardened their heart, they rejected it, and their son ended up dying. Well, I stopped by to tell you, I believe the word of God. I believe that we can be divinely healed. I've been divinely healed. My son has been divinely healed. So I'm going to keep my kids alive. I'm going to keep myself alive because I believe God. Okay? But this person that I was talking to did not believe they rejected it outright, and their son ended up dying. Okay? That's when the day you don't understand what you're hearing and the devil just snatch it right out your heart. And now you got no faith working. Now the word of God is not cooking inside of your heart and your spirit and it can't produce anything. And that's another place where people get confused. That's why I keep telling you it's not magic. It's not saying a few magic words. It's not doing some hocus pocus and then you get a result. It works the way the Lord says it works. He's got to plant that seed in your heart. That seed has to grow. It has to be mixed with faith. And then it produces fruit over time. Do you understand? And so that's why so many of you listen to me in different parts of the world. You keep thinking you're just going to get this instant harvest because you're thinking that is magic. Or you keep thinking that it's all up to God and you don't have to do anything. Or you keep thinking and listen to this one. That you keep getting exposed to the word of God, but you keep hardening your heart. You keep shutting it down. You keep rejecting what you're hearing. Okay, then it's never going to produce fruit. And every time you harden your heart, every time you don't make an effort to understand what apostle or prophet or pastor or evangelist is saying, when Jesus is speaking through them, when the Holy Ghost is speaking through them, and you make no effort to understand what they're saying, the devil's going to come snatch that word out of your heart. And that means when the devil attacks you in that area, you will have no faith ready to defend yourself. The Bible says that it is the shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked or the wicked one. Okay? It says it's the shield of faith. And what the devil wants to do is to be sure that the word of God doesn't take any root in your heart. 
so that when he attacks you in that area, you don't have any faith. Just like this person I just told you about had no faith in the area of divine healing and the devil attacked his family and took his son out. That's why I keep telling you this is not a joke, this is not a game. That's why I teach so hard on No More Genies. Because you've got to stop with that magical thinking. You've got to stop thinking that it's all up to God, that you don't have to do anything, or that it doesn't matter, that you can just go to church and hear the word and be like, yeah, 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 blah, 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 whatever. I know all that. I got that. Word. Yeah, nope. The devil's going to come snatch that word out of your heart, and that word now is not going to be mixed with faith, producing any fruit, and Satan is going to attack you in that area, and you won't be able to get your shield up to beat him back because you got no faith in, there, in that area because you never received the seed of the word that Jesus was trying to give you. You understand? Does that make sense to you now? Now you see why certain things happen to Christians. Because if you don't take that seed and you don't take that word and you don't work with it, you don't try to understand it, you don't get that faith going, the enemy's going to come and you've got no shield in that area. Okay? So let's move on. Okay, let's move on to verse uh, 5, Matthew 13, 5. Jesus said, some fell, he's talking about the seed, some of the seed fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Wow, that's deep. Now let's hear the translation or the explanation, okay? All right, here's the explanation in Matthew 13, 20, is what Jesus said. He said, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and it says, anon with joy receive it, that's old English, it means up front, it means at first, it means in the moment, he receives it with joy. So in other words, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Are you in church? Amen, preach, pastor. Amen, yes, sir. Oh, you preaching. Oh, preach that, that. Everybody's all happy in church because you're receiving the word. And, yeah, I got it, pastor. Okay. But then he says, yet he hath not root in himself. Oh, but endure for a while. Stop. So the Lord just said that even though some people are rejoicing and happy hallelujah and amen and all that, the Lord said they don't have a root. You know what that means? That means they're not solid in their relationship with God. Now, what do trees do when they grow? Trees are something else, boy. Trees are something else. That's why you have such a hard time pulling them up out of your backyard or out of a park. What do trees do? Trees grow these incredible, thick, gnarly <laughs> roots. And trees latch on to the ground, man. Trees say, you're not moving us, because a tree has to deal with all the seasons and all the wind and everything. And so trees go these incredible roots that are just so thick and sometimes many feet long. And they reach down into earth and they anchor themselves in the earth so they can stand. So the Lord says that there are some believers who uh, they don't have any root. They're not anchored in God. You don't have a made up in mind. You're not solid in your relationship with God yet. You're not stable. You haven't put any roots down yet in God and in the kingdom. Okay? And if you're like that, if you don't really have any root, really have any root in yourself, the Lord said you're only going to endure for a while. Why is that so important? Because, again, this parable is teaching you that it takes time for the word of God to produce. It takes time for the word of God to spring forth and bear fruit. And I stopped by to tell you, that's 100% the truth. If you want to track your spiritual growth, it's going to take time for you, to, from you to, for you to grow from wherever it was when you started to wherever it is you are now. I don't care where you are in Christ. You weren't there when you first got born again. You had to grow to where you are now. And the only way you begin to really grow in God, like Jesus said, is you have to have roots. You have to have a root in God like trees. You've got to dig down deep. You've got to make up your mind that I'm going to walk with God no matter what. And if you are not of that mind when you first started, and most of us aren't, it's going to take you a while to develop that mindset, to develop that discipline, to develop that daily habits. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. It's going to take you a minute to really 
Learn how to put roots down in God, to be faithful in your church attendance, faithful in your Bible reading, faithful in your prayer time, to say, like Daniel, because Daniel had it, uh, Joseph had it, Job had it. They said, I'm going to serve God no matter what. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job said, I'm not going to curse God and die, even though I'm going through the worst time in my life, because they had roots. Well, that didn't just happen overnight, okay? So the Lord said, so let's continue. Uh, verse 21, yet he hath no root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. Oh my goodness. The Lord said that tribulation, that's another word for trouble, or persecution, that's when the devil comes after you or wicked people come after you. When people talk about you, they try to make your life difficult, they try to throw you in jail, they try to kill you, they badmouth you, they slander you, they try to humiliate you, they try to shame you, that's persecution. They fight you, they oppose you, they do everything they can to put hindrances in your way, to be a hindrance, okay? That's persecution. So the Lord says, trouble's coming or persecution coming, and it's going to rise because of the word, uh, <laughs> Now, the Lord just told you that when he plants his word, the seed of the kingdom in your heart, trouble and persecution is coming because of that word. Why? Because the devil is not just going to sit back and let you just grow in Christ, you know, and just let you do that. Wicked people are not just going to sit back and let you grow in Christ. And this earth is cursed because of Adam and Eve's sin. And God pronounced those curses in the Garden of Eden because of the sin of the first family. So this, we're living in a sin-cursed earth now. So that's why trouble happens. Because the sin curse is here, the devil is here, some demons are here, and wicked people are here. Okay? So tribulation and or persecution is coming. And the Lord said that when you get into the Word, that's why if you notice that when you have those times when you say, I'm going to get my prayer life together, I'm going to dedicate a certain amount of time to the Lord every day. You notice every time you try to do that, the phone ring. You notice every time you do, try to do that, something good is on TV. You ever notice all of a sudden the, the kids just get really antsy and get really loud and they're hungry and they mama, all that. You ever notice that whenever you turn your attention to focus on Christ, look like something over here just happened. That's why that happens. <laughs> okay? That's why that happens. Because every time you get ready to focus on the Word, look like something popping up. So the Lord said, trouble or persecution is going to arise because of the word, because, the, because of the word, because this world and the devil and the demons and the wicked people are not just going to let you sit back and grow, okay? It's like bugs on a farmer's harvest. When the, when the plants and the, and, and the corn and the crops and the tomatoes and the potatoes, everything spring up, what happens? Here come the bugs. They're not just going to sit back, they're going to try to... Come try to, you know, eat up everything. And so the Lord said, Tribula tribulation or persecution, persecution is going to rise because of the word. And then he said, the last thing he said about that is that by and by he is offended. You know what that means? You get hurt. You get offended. You get your feelings hurt. Okay? And then you just say, forget it. I have been there. And I know a lot of people that have been there because ain't no hurt like church hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. I wish it wasn't true. Ain't no church like church hurt. Ain't no hurt like when you get hurt in church. When you get hurt in church, it hurts bad, and you tend to get hurt really deeply. And a whole lot of people just throw their hands up and say, I'm never coming back to church again. I've seen people get embarrassed in church. I've seen people that were close, they fall out. I've seen people get embarrassed from like the pulpit. I've seen people get up front and call people out and put them on blast. I've seen people get betrayed by people that they trusted. I mean, I've seen a whole lot of stuff in my days. I've been in church since I was about four or five years old. So I've seen a lot of stuff in my days, and I have been there. I have been hurt because of church and church folks, and I've been hurt deeply too. And I can tell you of a surety that I would not be in church today if I didn't know the Lord personally, and not because of my relationship with him, because of his relationship with me. Because Jesus spoke to me, because he reached out to me, because he loved me, because he healed me, because he believed in me. I'm giving him all the glory. The credit is not mine, because if it was just me on my own, I would not be in church today. I kid you not. 
Well, Prophet Taylor, aren't you a prophet? Yes, I'm a prophet because the Lord called me, because the Lord worked with me, because the Lord called me, because the Lord challenged me. It's all him. He gets the glory because just based on the hurt and the pain that I have been through, I would not be in church today if I didn't personally know the personal love of Jesus. That's why I spent so much time at the beginning of the broadcast telling you, you got to know the Lord for yourself. Because the Lord said, trouble or persecution is coming because of the word. And it's easy to get offended. And people wear their feelings on their sleeve in church. And there's, a re there's many reasons for that. But one of the reasons people do that is because there are lots of times where people don't have their needs met in other parts of their lives. So they bring all those unmet needs to church. And they lay them down right at the feet of the church or right at the feet of the pastor. And that's why sometimes people are so sensitive. Sometimes people's expectation levels are very, very high that everybody's going to be loving and kind and have good integrity and be faithful and be all the things that Christians should be. That's nice, but that's not realistic. That's not true because everybody in churches in different places. And then some people in churches are wolves in sheep's clothing. Some people just play in church. They're there to try to devour. They're there to try to take as much from the congregation as they can. They don't bit more know the Lord than my left shoe. They they fake it. They, 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 they something else. See, there's all kinds of people in church. But when you're young and when you first starting out or when, you, when you're kind of inexperienced, you don't know that. And so you might be kind of trusting and then some stuff might happen that you didn't expect to happen. And then you can get hurt so badly. You say, I ain't never going to church again. I have been there. <laughs> and I know quite a few people that have been there. And I know some people that had to take years to heal just to be able to come back to church again. And do you know why? The reason why is because whenever you get serious about your relationship with Jesus and the word of God and you're trying to grow in Christ, the devil going to come at you hard. Wicked people going to come at you hard. Trials and tribulations going to come at you hard. And most of the time they come at us harder than we anticipated. And most of the time stuff happens and you had no idea you was going to have to go through all that to try to get your relationship with God together. And so that's why the Lord starts off by saying you have to be rooted and grounded in God. You have to have a made up mind and you also have to develop some disciplines. I'm going to talk about that in the next one. You have to have some daily disciplines that you practice. Uh, Joseph did that. Job in the Bible did that. Daniel. Daniel's known for praying to the God of Jacob at the same time every day. And he did it with his window open. He did it in captivity. He did it in front of a bunch of people that didn't believe in the God of Israel. And Daniel did not care. Daniel knew how to stay faithful to his God regardless of what was going on around him. See what I mean? Because Daniel is an example in the Bible of someone that had a root in himself. So when the word came to Daniel, no matter what he went through, he didn't get offended. He didn't turn away from God. But the devil is going to, the devil and wicked people are going to try very hard to hurt you and offend you and stop you from coming to church so you can stop hearing the word of God and just dry up. That's why that happens. Now, all of a sudden, life should make more sense to you after hearing that. Now you see why stuff happens. Now you see why some people leave church. They don't come back for years. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you, because ain't no church, ain't no hurt like church hurt. Okay, but the Lord said, this is what's going to happen. When you start trying to get serious about the word, which is why you got to develop a root. Okay? Let's look at the next verse. I don't think I'm going to get to the second parable tonight, so I think we're just going to do this one. I don't think I have, I'm going to have time to get to this one. I'll see. If the Holy Ghost tells me to do it, I'll do it, but I don't know if I'll have time. We'll see. Because I may just, just end with this one. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. All right. Let's look at verse uh, 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. That's Matthew 13, 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. So let's hear the explanation. What does the Lord say that is? That's in Matthew 13, 22. He also that received seed. You heard the word. You got exposed to the word of God. Jesus sowed the word into you. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Oh my goodness, what did the Lord just say? The Lord said that we can hear the word, we can receive the word, but if you're one of them people that have thorns in your life, he said the care of this world. What is he talking about? He's talking about being so busy, he's talking about your day to day. 
He's talking about just, you know, because there's some things that have to be done. Laundry, groceries, taking the trash out, going to work, going to school, cleaning the house, paying bills. That stuff's got to be done. Okay, no matter where you live, that's got to be done. And the busyness of life can choke the word of God. It's a, like thorns in your heart. So what you have to do is you have to develop some daily disciplines, daily disciplines to learn how to put your roots down in God and say that no matter what, I'm going to spend time with God today. Now, the reason I bring that up is because there are many days. What I do for a living is I'm a creative professional. I write. So I write books. I write plays. I write music. Uh, I write many things. I write comic books. And so uh, my mind tends to always be buzzing with the next project or the project I'm working on or the thing I want to do or something like that. And there's been many days when I woke up where I just wanted to jump into my day. But I've developed a discipline. I was like, no, we're going to spend time with the Lord. We're going to get in the Word first. We're going to put God's Word first. And we're going to listen to the Word. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to talk to the Lord. We're going to put Him first. Because Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. The Lord said, don't spend your energy worrying about the things. The Lord said, spend your energy putting me and my kingdom first, and the things will be added unto you. Okay? So I've had to develop the daily discipline. And anybody that's grown in the Word, you've got to develop some daily disciplines. You've got to spend time reading the Bible. You've got to spend time listening to a sermon or a message or a prophetic word from your pastor or other apostles and prophets. Like I listen to T.D. Jakes all the time. I also listen to Marilyn Hickey all the time. Uh, I listen to Pastor Bill Winston. You know, so there's other people. And of course, my pastor, Apostle John Eckhart, I listen to him on a regular basis. So you've got to spend time listening to sermons or prophetic words or teachings from other people. Uh, uh, fivefold ministers in the body. So you got to spend time in your own Bible study. You got to spend time listening to preaching and teaching. Then you have to spend time in prayer. You have to spend time in God's presence. You have to spend time talking to Him and letting Him talk to you. And then you have to spend time in worship. You got to spend some time worshiping God, coming to His presence, bringing His glory, His presence into the room, worshiping Him, praising Him, thanking Him. Okay? Because worship is a multi level thing, worship is deep. Worship is a weapon. Worship is a whole lot of things. And you have to, and I do that every day. And, you, and I developed a discipline. I didn't always do it. I grew into that in everything I just told you. You have to develop the daily disciplines. Because if you don't, the Lord said that the care of this world, always being so anxious to jump into your day, and oh, I got to go to the DMV, and oh, I got to go to the grocery store, and oh, wait, I got to drive the kids to practice, and oh wait, I got to call my best friend back, oh no wait, I got to check my email, all that's going to come flooding your mind when you wake up. All of your to-do list stuff is going to come flooding in when you wake up and you got to say, no, I'm not going to put that first. I'm going to spend time in the Word, I'm going to spend time listening to uh, prophecies or sermons, preaching and teaching, I'm going to spend time in the presence of God praying and giving my supplication, letting God know what I want, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, and then listening to him talk back to me. And then I'm going to spend time worshiping him. That's four things you need to do for your spiritual walk every day. Time in the word, listening to preaching and teaching and prophecy, time in prayer, and time in worship. Okay? That's how you develop a root in Christ. And you're going to have to learn how to do that regardless of what's happening in your life. When I go out of town, I do the same thing. If I'm in a hotel, I do all that in my hotel room. You see what I mean? To put the Lord first, to put the Word first, to put His kingdom first, and to spend time with Him every day. Because if you don't, the Lord said that all that busyness is thorns in your heart. And it's going to come, and the cares of living, cares of this world, is going to choke the Word, and it's going to make you unfruitful. You won't be able to bear fruit. And then the Lord says... The deceitfulness of riches. Good God Almighty. Do you know what that means? That means that the Lord says that money can deceive you. How does money deceive you? Money deceives you in many ways. But if you have money, if you have what you consider to be a lot of money, uh, it can deceive you into thinking that you don't need the Lord. 
and it can deceive you into thinking that you don't need the word. How do I know that's true? Because if you ever try to minister or witness to anybody that's well off, what do they say? They say, I'm doing just fine. You're doing just fine based on what? What do they point to? They point to their spouse. They point to their house. They point to their money. They point to their kids. They say, look, see, I don't need a savior. I'm doing just fine. I got a good job. I got plenty of money. You know, I, I'm married. Uh, my kids are doing fine, so I don't need none of that Jesus stuff. It's the most amazing thing. That's what the Lord is talking about, the deceitfulness of riches, that if you have money, money can fool you into thinking that you don't need Jesus. If you have money, money can fool you into thinking that you don't need the word of God, and that's not the truth. That's not the truth. But the Lord said riches are deceitful. So that means if you have money, you're going to have to develop the daily discipline of getting into the Word, because the Lord said it's possible to live your entire life, make all the money that you can, and then not know when you're going to die, and then when God gets ready to call your soul home, God calls you a fool. And why does God call you a fool? Because you spent all your time on the riches of this world, but you weren't rich towards God. Now, some people take that to the extreme and mean, to mean that you don't have to manage your money, you're not supposed to have wealth. Neither one of those are true either. I just want to throw that balance in. But I'm saying the Lord said it's possible to spend your entire life building up physical wealth and have no investment in God's kingdom. And the Lord said, you're a fool. And I heard a preacher say one time, if God calls you a fool, rest assured you are a fool. Okay? So the Lord says that you got thorns in your heart if all you're worried about all the time is the busyness of your schedule and you don't have any time to spend time in the Word. In the written Word of God in the Bible, listen to preaching and teaching, time in his presence through prayer and worship. If you don't have time for that, you got thorns in your heart that are choking the word. It's not going to be proof, fruitful. Or if you got money and you feel like because you have money, you don't need Jesus and you don't need the word. And that's why so many people are deceived. And that's why when you minister to people that have money, they say, I'm fine. I'm doing fine. I got money. I got a husband. I got a wife. I got a house. I got a job. I'm doing fine. Okay. All right, and finally, let's look at the last group. The last group is found in verse 8, Matthew 13, 8. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some hundredfold and some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. He who hath the ears to hear, let him hear. So let's look at the explanation or the translation of that, and that is found in Matthew 13, 23. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Wow. Okay, so what did the Lord say? The Lord said you receive seed into the good ground. What is he talking about? He's talking about a receptive heart. A heart that's not hard, a heart that, that has a root, and a heart that is not full of thorns. So what does that tell you? That tells you that it's not the Lord that's the problem because he's sowing the good seed of the word of God. It's your heart that's the problem. You might have a heart that's hard that don't hear the word and the devil going to snatch it out. Never took, it never got in there. You might have a heart that's stony ground uh, like we talked about being snatched or you might have a heart full of thorns that you're so worried about your business, uh, your business and your busyness and you feel like you're all right because you got money and you got thorns. Don't wait for the word to take root. So the Lord says in this parable about his kingdom, that is not him sowing the word. That's the problem. It's the state of your heart. That's the problem. Now you see why there's such a difference between Christians. Now you see why there's such a difference between people. Because the Lord said there's four groups of people that hear the word, not just one. He said, some people, the devil snatched the word because they don't understand it. They don't apply it. He said, some people, it's stony ground where they, they, they get it for a while, but then tribulation or persecution arises and they get offended. And they said, forget it. They give up. They stop walking with God. Number three, the Lord says, some people got thorns in their heart. They're obsessed with their business or their money. But the Lord said, if you receive the seed into good ground, as he that heareth the word and understandeth it. In other words, you are receptive to God's word, and you, you make an effort to apply the word. You understand it. 
you keep seeking understanding until you understand what the Lord's saying to you through the written word, through the living word, and through the rhema word. You got to press in. You got to seek it. You got to want it. And you got to keep working with it until you understand it. You see what I mean? The Lord said, that's good ground. A receptive heart. Uh, just like he said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. A good heart. A heart that receives the word, that understands the word. Okay? You don't let thorns, you don't let stony places, you don't let the devil, you don't let trials and tribulations take it from you. Then he said, that bears fruit and bringing forth some 100 fold, some 60, some 30. That's important too. Now I did a whole video on 36 and 100 fold. So that's in my, uh, in my video set on my Facebook page or my YouTube channel or my Periscope. I did a video about 30, 60, 100 fold. Okay? But God also tells you there that every Christian is not going to bear fruit at the same level. Some Christians are going to get a 30 fold harvest, a 30 fold return. Some Christians are going to get a 60 fold harvest, a 60 fold return. And some Christians are going to get a 100 fold harvest, a 100 fold return. And once again, uh, you need to watch that video because I don't have time to explain that all here. But once again, that's why so many Christians have been taught that you just automatically get a 100 fold or that it's all up to God. That's not true. <laughs> So again, I encourage you to watch that video. But anyway, the Lord tells you right here that different Christians are going to bear fruit at different levels. So you shouldn't be surprised by that. <laughs> you should not be surprised that different Christians bear fruit at different levels because the Lord already told you that even when you have good ground, even when you have a good heart, that when the word gets in there, it's going to bear fruit. And that also speaks to, to it taking time, which is why you have to hang in there with it. And I'm going to say this last little bit and then I'll be ready to wrap up. Um... Uh, the Word of God works like Jesus said it works here. It works like seed. Seed time and harvest are seed and fruit. And so that's why you have to stay with it. That's why I want you to notice. That's why sometimes, have you noticed some Sundays it's so hard to get up out of bed to go to church? It seems like everything's fighting you, man. It seems like your mind is fighting you. It seems like your body's fighting you. It seems like the devil's fighting you. It seems like your flesh is fighting you. Do you know why? Because it's exposing yourself to the Word of God over and over and over again over time. It's going and spending time in worship, in His presence, in His glory. My pastor says that if ain't no glory, he ain't going to that church. My pastor says when he visits churches, if ain't no glory, he ain't staying because he wants to spend time in the glory of God. The glory of God is supposed to be in the house of God. Okay, that's scriptural. And so it's, it's the, the constant receiving of that seed and exposure over time. That helps you grow and bear fruit in the word of God. It's not magic. It's not like a microwave. Boop, 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 boop. Zzz, beep. It's not like that. It's much more like a farmer or a gardener, which is exactly what Jesus is saying here. So I'm saying that to those of you that are watching me to encourage you, to make you feel like, may help you understand that just because things don't happen overnight or all of a sudden doesn't mean nothing's happening. It means you're growing, but you have to keep going. Just like you have to keep watering a plant. Just like you have to keep fertilizing, just like you have to trim uh, dead leaves. There's a lot you have to do to get a full harvest. The same thing is true about your life. That's what the Lord is trying to demonstrate here with this parable. Okay? So, I hope that was a blessing to you. Like I said, we need to deep dive into what Jesus actually said, because he tells us what his kingdom is like. And after these explanations tonight... A lot more of it should make sense to you. A lot more about things that you've experienced and things you've seen should make sense to you because the Lord said this is how it actually is. There's four groups of people that receive the word, not just one. Everybody not going to respond the same. Jesus already told you that, all right? Okay, great. So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen and I will pray for you. Um, also, when you see me close my eyes and I start speaking tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost about deliverance, if any unclean spirits need to be cast out, about healing, about finances, and if there's any prophetic word he wants me to release. Okay? So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Now, if I don't pray for them when I'm on my live broadcast, it's because I didn't see them. So just be sure to put them uh, wherever you're watching me on, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and I'll pray. When I see them, I'll pray if I don't pray live. Okay?
okay. What the Holy Ghost just said to me was, his mercy endures forever. I heard the word mercy in the spirit when I was praying in tongues. So I want to release that word to you. I want to release what the Holy Ghost gave me, mercy. God says his mercy endures forever. His mercies are new every morning. Okay? His mercy, he shows mercies unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. So somebody watching me needs to hear that the word to you is mercy. And I'm receiving that for myself. Mercy. Sometimes we're so hard on ourselves. Sometimes our internal dialogue, what we say to ourselves, is we're beating up on ourselves. We're punishing ourselves for sins past. And, and the Holy Ghost just said, mercy, that the Lord is merciful. So I want to release that word to you, a word of mercy. I'm going to meditate on that myself because I know sometimes I'm too hard on myself too. Okay, I'm getting a word about finances. The Lord is saying that he's going to give instruction about finances. Now, it's the second time I heard the Lord say that. So when the Lord repeats himself, that means pay attention. It's like when the Bible says, verily, verily, or, or you know, the Lord saying, paying attention, pay, pay attention. That's the second time I heard the Lord say he's going to release instructions about finance. So for whoever of you that's listening to me around the world, whoever that's for, uh, and I'm receiving it for myself, God's going to give you specific instruction about your finances. Okay, the Lord is going to show you exactly what to do. When the Lord says something like that, that means you want to uh, be still, which is what I talked about last Sunday, this past Sunday. Be still so you can hear what God has to say, so you don't miss what he's saying, because you always want to do exactly what the Lord is saying to do, because your blessing is always in HBO, hear, believe, obey. Your blessing is always in hearing God, believing God, and obeying God, doing what the Lord told you to do. So what you don't want to do is run out ahead of him, and what you don't want to do is lag behind him. You want to stay in step, and that's what the prophetic word is for. That's what the rhema word is for, okay? So that's a, a word for someone that God's going to give you specific instruction about those finances, okay? Can you see now how all this works together, about how God talks about being still so we can hear what he's saying? What if the Lord tells you to invest in a stock? What if the Lord tells you to start a new business in September? What if the Lord tells you there's going to be discounts on all your favorite stores next week? What if the Lord gives you inside information? <laughs> okay. All right. I think that's it. So God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this was second Thursday night, so the second Thursday of every month, I'm on at 7 o'clock to continue this series, No More Genies, and right now I'm doing a series called We Do It Wrong, and again, so I encourage you to watch every video in the series, so this is the second one, last week was the initial kickoff, and this is the second one, and I'm gonna, we're going to be deep diving into the parables of Jesus for the express purpose of finding out how his kingdom really works, so we can get rid of our you know, religion that's not doing us any good and, and not giving us any power and learn to see what the Lord actually said so we can learn how to actually obey what Jesus is saying and, and you know, know how to navigate life and all those different kinds of things. Okay, so I'm really excited about this series and hope uh, it's been a blessing to you. I'm on Sunday at my regular time, uh, which is 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I'll be on this Sunday, and then um, those of you that want to sow into my ministry, I have a Zelle. Uh, I, I have a, a PayPal that's listed there, and I also have a charity link through Amazon, but I also have a Zelle if you want to donate, uh, and it's prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. So for those of you that want to sow seed into my ministry, you can use my Zelle, okay? All right, thank you so much for tuning in live. Thank you for those of you that are watching the replay. Hope it's been a blessing to you. I consider it an honor. You hear me say it all the time. I feel like it's an honor to be used by God because God don't need me. Okay? <laughs> so I appreciate, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be used by him. And so I hope it's a blessing to you. So I want you to be encouraged to keep on walking with Jesus, to, to follow him and do what the Lord says do, and walk in the full loving of, level of blessing that you're called to. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. And I will see you Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless.